You might recognize this car from Fast and the Furious, or if you're a gamer like me, maybe 1990 video game Stunts, does that ring a bell? It's got a 5.2 liter V12, a 5-speed manual, and a 76-gallon gas tank for that 450 horsepower gas guzzling beast. Can you guess what car it is? We're talking about the Lamborghini LM002, baby! My name is Brendan, and you're watching Where's Neutral. Let's get into it. The LM002 was produced from 1986 to 1993 in an attempt to replace the now outdated Jeep for the US military. They started off with two prototypes, the first being the Cheetah. The Cheetah was a big and bulky, kinda cool, kinda ugly four-wheel drive experiment. If this went well for Lamborghini, they'd go on to mass produce them for the military, making themselves a buttload of money in the process. They presented their Cheetah to the US military in 1977, and the Pentagon, well, I'm just gonna say it, I'm gonna say it, they thought it was dookie. It handled poorly, and the rear-mounted V8 Chrysler engine made it kind of slow and sluggish. So unfortunately for Lamborghini, it's back to the drawing board. They tried again at the Geneva Auto Show in 1981 with their new and revised LM001. Unlike the Cheetah, the LM001 had a slightly quicker 180 horsepower rear-mounted AMC V8. The military was a little bit more accepting in this model, and they said, hey, well, we'll at least give you a chance. We'll, get, we'll see what it does. We'll see what it can do. They took it to the dunes for some testing, and within the first few minutes, they flipped it trying to drive up a dune. This is because of the engine being in the rear. See, it handled so poorly because all the weight was in the back and the front wheels were just stripped of all traction. So, you got a little bit of like, like a little disaction. With their one and only prototype flipped and now unusable, back to the drawing board again, Lamborghini. This time though, they weren't talking any funny business. In just one year, they rebuilt the entire chassis to hold a 5.2 liter V12 pulled straight out of the Kutentaj. And with their new tubular steel space frame, they now have the heaviest, but fastest, prototype yet. Even though the US didn't want it, it did pick up a contract with the Saudi military for about 500 to 1,000 vehicles to be produced. Finally, Lamborghini has made it in the four-wheel drive market and they can finally reap the rewards they worked so hard for. Well, the contract went through and the entire thing was a flop. Everything they spent the entire decade on it failed, and Lamborghini would then go on to become a completely forgotten car company no one's ever heard of again. A company that no one would even remember their name. Now, this is normally where my co-host Tommy would say, Brendan, stop being so diddly darn negative. But he's pooping right now, so I'm just gonna have to do it myself. Even though Lamborghini failed three times, they know the moment you give up is the moment you let someone else win. I read that in my Kobe book. They work tirelessly and endlessly every day as hard as it could doing things that I don't even understand because I'm not an engineer. But they did all this stuff and by the Brussels Auto Show in 1986, they finally unveiled the LM002. This final attempt from Lamborghini came with the 5.2 liter V12 from the Countach or an optional 7.2 liter V12 from one of their marine thingies. I think they're like power boats or something, I don't know. They had a five speed manual from the Aston Martin Vantage, an eight and a half second zero to 60, and a 16 second quarter mile. Not bad for something that weighs about 18 and a half shacks. Or for the UK folks, 36 and a half Harry Styles. Even with the introduction of things like power steering, locking four wheel drive, manual hubs, and run flat tires, the LM002 was still not good enough for the military. Even with 345 millimeter tires, it wasn't enough. To put that into perspective, that's 13 and a half inches. And I will show you that on this tape measure I use for absolutely nothing else but measuring the inches of a tire. With competition like the Humvee and Toyota Mega Cruiser, which you can learn about right there, there were simply too many better and cheaper options for the military to choose over the Lamborghini. Well, they took the hint. Lamborghini decided to change their marketing strategy and market directly towards civilians. Now the civilian models got extreme upgrades, things like full leather trim, power windows, AC, and a premium auto system. Even though it's mounted in like the weirdest spot ever, I don't even know how you use it, it's like, I don't... I don't, I, don't, I don't know. These new civilian models were dubbed the Rambo Lambo and all kinds of celebrities, good and bad, were trying to get their hands on these beautiful vehicles. To list a few, Sylvester Stallone owned one. Good. Eddie Van Halen owned one. Good. Mike Tyson owned one. Good. Udon Hussein owned one. Not so good. But it's okay, because US military blew it up. So, we're good now. Despite its popularity, they still had some flaws. One of those being the Euro models that were carbureted, but sort of kind of sometimes catch on fire. This is good though, because it led to the LM002 getting fuel upgrades from the Diablo. The other flaw, perhaps the worst flaw of them all, 
is they put the e-brake on the floor beside your right foot. How the heck am I supposed to drift with the e-brake down there? I'm gonna be like fighting my knee with my arm and I can't look up and it's just, come on Lamborghini, you know better. Even with these horrific challenges, the LM002 was still loved by many. They even tried to race one in the Paris Dakar rally, but then they ran out of money after upgrading the suspension and dropping weight and yada yada yada. In the end, Lamborghini got so many orders for the LM002 that in the factories themselves, they could not even keep up. Due to its more complicated manufacturing process in 1991, they were forced to shut it down to focus on more profitable models. Loved by many, hated by more, the LM002 will always have a special place in my heart. To everybody else, it'll continue to be Lamborghini's biggest flop. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Mwah.